After much deliberation, I've decided to transition my YouTube channel to be a gardening channel, as you can see by these plants I have on this table. Uh, just kidding, I have a smart home device sent to me by Elecro, it's called the Grow Cube. And I'm gonna be checking out this device. Full disclosure, Elecro sent me this box free of charge and didn't see the video before I published it, just so you know, for full transparency. And I appreciate them for sending me this. I have various plants here that I bought, the finest cheap plants that Walmart has to offer in my area. So I didn't want to spend like a ton of money on different house plants, but I wanted to try to find some different ones that require different amounts of watering so that it, it, it will be a good experiment to see how well this can water up to four different plants. And these two are gonna be the most similar watering schedules, but and these two are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm hoping this will be a variety of scenarios we can try out for this grow cube that's over here. And so these two plants require watering once a week, and the succulent with the cactus is going to be watered every two weeks. And, and then I have some orchids right here that only need to be watered once a week, but only three uh, teaspoons. So they said for this orchid, you can put three ice cubes in it, so that's about three teaspoons of water. And so one thing that, a little side note, that we found out with another orchid we have in our house is you have to be very careful with how you water. You can't just pour water on it in the soil like you would other plants because or you know, it's easy to overwater these plants and you start getting mold in the soil on the top and, and then the flower and the, it starts dying and wilting. And luckily, someone told us that if you have a you know, two, two containers here, like I have here, you can put water down in the second container and it will draw the moisture up from the bottom of the main primary container. And so that will allow the water to be able to seep up from the soil and it can just draw with whatever amount of moisture that it needs without overwatering the top and getting moldy. And we've, we've done this for the past year or so with another orchid that we have, and it works really well with, the, with those plants. So that's a little gardening tip. You didn't think you'd be getting that on a home networking channel, but that's my little tip of the day for if you want to take care of orchids. And so that I want to try with this grow cube. I want to put the soil sensor in the soil, of course, but then put the hose down in the bottom of this second container. So then I'm, I'm putting the water in the bottom. So hopefully it'll draw up just like I would be watering it manually myself. And I, this will be a good I think experiment to see how it can handle different scenarios with these different types of plants. And so we will try this experiment out and we'll see how this works. I'll show how to set this up. One thing that's interesting about this grow cube is it has an app on your phone that you can pick different plants and it'll automatically set the watering cycle based on the plants that you pick in the app on your phone to be able to control this. And one other aspect that they, I saw they had advertised that I really want to try out as well is supposedly you can, hook this up to home assistant. So I, anything that I can you know, have connected to home assistant, I'm all for it. So that's another reason why I wanted to try this out. So I'm gonna test that out and see if it actually does. And if it does, I'm gonna be pretty excited about it because I can be able to control this or at least monitor what's happening with the water cycles from home assistant. I doubt I'll be able to pick the specific plants to, for the watering cycle. I can probably, probably have to do that through the app because I don't see how that would be set up through Home Assistant unless there's a, a specific integration created for that to be able to select everything from Home Assistant. Because this, this device can connect to your Wi-Fi. And I think you can also use Bluetooth on this device as well if you don't want to have it online. You can you, you're, They allow you to control this completely offline, with, but you still have to have their app though, and, but you can use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So that's nice if you do want to, don't want to connect anything up to the cloud. For this grow cube here, you put the water, you push, there's a little button on the top here and that makes the lid fly open. And you can fill it full of water. There is a max level that you can set in there, 1500 milliliters it looks like. Uh, on the back, there's a place for four different hoses and you can connect in four different soil sensors as well. And it just plugs into DC 12 volts. There's also a USB power as well possibly. So now let's get the grow cube set up. The first thing you could do is put the soil sensors in the soil of each of the plants, like so. Then connect it to the grow cube. It's a magnetic plug. And you just continue putting the sensors in each of the plants and connect it to the grow cube. And once you have it all connected, you can start measuring out your hoses and you can cut it to whatever length you need. And then you can plug the hose into the grow cube. Make sure the hose goes all the way in. 
Next, you're gonna connect the hose that connects to the grow cube to the watering hose, which has the holes in it. As you can connect each side to each of those connector pieces. Make sure both of them are on all the way as far as you can get it to make sure it's really tight and there's no water that will leak out of them. Make sure the holes are facing the proper way, otherwise you'll end up spraying the water outside of your pot. It's a little bit tricky to position the hose in a smaller pot, but there are some black plastic pieces that can help hold the hose against the soil so it doesn't move around too much, so that's very helpful to have. Here's what it looks like with everything connected. I didn't organize any of the hoses or cables, but you can get an idea of what it looks like with everything connected. Finally, you plug the power cable into the grow cube. They give you a lot of different connectors and hose length that you need so you can uh, configure it to meet your needs. And if you use these different types of connectors, you could water potentially more than four plants, even though you have only four different schedules that you can water on. Now you're ready to fill up the grow cube with water. You can go up to 1500 milliliters, as I mentioned earlier. When you turn on the grow cube, it'll blink these two lights, red and blue, to let you know that it's ready to be connected. And then you open up the app and you walk through the installation process. There's a couple of instructions at the beginning. You click add device and then continue. And then click continue if you want to do networking mode with Wi-Fi. And then you enter your Wi-Fi password. And then you confirm the operations and click continue. Then you have to switch to the Grow Cube's built-in Wi-Fi to hotspot to be able to connect back into the app to finish the setup so it gives it the Wi-Fi information. However, this didn't work at first. So I originally got this grow cube around the spring of 2025 and we're now almost in fall of 2025. And part of the problem was the app was not updated in iOS to work with the grow cube. And if the app doesn't work, you can't use the products. That's one downside to this. Even though it does work in Home Assistant, you still need the app to get the initial Wi-Fi connection set up on the grow cube. But once the, I waited for them to update the app, which took about a month or two, maybe two months to update, uh, at least they were, they were responsive to that, which was great. They they said they got that working for me. Uh, I was able to get it set up with no problem. But let's try this again. When you hit continue, it'll actually connect to the device instead of giving an error, and you'll see that it's setting up the networking and the Wi-Fi connection on the Grow Cube. And then it tells you to disconnect from the Grow Cube Wi-Fi so you can go back to your normal Wi-Fi network. And once you get connected back to your Wi-Fi, it'll say configure successfully, and then you can click into the home page of the app. When the Grow Cube is connected to the Wi-Fi, you'll see a solid blue light instead of the flashing blue and red light. And now you can add your plants to the Grow Cube, and you can just select the watering outlet, which is A through D for the four different outlets. Then you can search through the plant database. I'm gonna search for cactus for the first plant that I'm going to add. You can see the different suitable environments and the, the moisture levels that they recommend for each of the plants. And once you choose one, you can choose smart watering schedule or regular watering schedule. Smart watering does it by soil moisture levels and the schedule and one does it by date and time. And so you can name your plant. You can adjust the soil moisture levels manually if you want to change them from the recommended settings. And you can also avoid watering during the sun if you have the plant exposed to sunlight, which is a pretty cool feature. And you can see I added the first plant and you just continue this for all the other three plants. As you can see there, I already added the remaining ones. And you can see the moist, current moisture levels and the min-max moisture recommended. And here's what it looks like when it's actually wiring the plant. I didn't have it adjusted very good in this video, so that's why it's overflowing the edge and had the soil a little high, but I had a pan underneath just to catch everything. And one thing that I noticed is a little glitch on the interface is if you click into the plant, you can't go back. So if you're manually watering it, you'll end up overflowing it. Like in this example, I started manual watering and clicked into the plant accidentally and it made a big mess. And so I actually got this set up with Home Assistant. It's a third party integration someone set up. It does seem to work pretty well. Uh, so just keep in mind, it's not produced by Elecro, but they do advertise it as working with Home Assistant. And so I'm assuming as long as nothing really changes in, in majorly in the firmware, as long as you keep, keep it connected to your network, even if they stop making the app, it will still work with Home Assistant. If you're wanting to connect this directly to Home Assistant without having an app set up, it's a little bit of a bummer, but at least it does work well. 
uh, once you do get it set up. Elko seems to kind of cater themselves towards the do-it-yourself community. So I hope before they discontinue the app or something like that, they would maybe re- release something that you could use or maybe unlock it or open it up a little bit more with a firmware update or something so you can maybe have a little more direct access. Uh, it would be nice to see products like this have like an API or something like that that someone could build an integration with Home Assistant or other apps a lot more easily because that's what I like that's what I like about this even though it does work with Home Assistant and someone got it to work. I wish uh, to, yeah, I really like to see products that are smart like this have more open APIs. Even if you don't open up all the software open source, at least provide some APIs to be able to allow you know, home users, more advanced users, or community members to be able to create their own integrations and be able to use these products in very interesting ways. To get started in Home Assistant, you need to go to the Elicro GrowCube integration page, and it tells you to install the repository for Hex, which is the community repository. And this will allow you to add the GrowCube integration that's in that repository. This is what it looks like when you have it in Home Assistant. You can see the entities in there and all the different diagnostic information, which is great to have all those sensors and things now in Home Assistant. So you can do automations or whatever with it. And then to create an automation, just go to Automations page and then click on Create Automation. And I'll just create a new automation. And then I'm just going to show you what it looks like in the action block to see what options are available for the Grow Cube. And you just go to the actions and you pick other actions. And then you want to go to the grow cube because it has a special integration there and you can do scheduled watering or smart watering just like the app. So this scheduled watering looks similar to what you can pick in the app. You have ABCD for the channels and you have the duration and the interval for this. So you can pick how long you want it to water and how often you want it to water. So now I want to show the smart watering which is next so if you go back to the actions and then go back to the grow cube you'll be able to click on smart watering instead and you'll see similar options except it, it bases it on the min max moisture levels instead of a certain interval so that makes it like how i've shown you in the app where you can pick the plant watering schedules on the smart cycle so this is pretty cool you get similar integration you don't really need the catalog because you can enter in your own percentages Note that you can only use the app or the Home Assistant integration, but not both at the same time. But you can go into the integration on Home Assistant and disable it temporarily if you need to use the app for whatever reason to configure the Grow Cube. And then you can just re-enable it when you're done. So after several months, this is what my plants look like. Everything is looking pretty good, except for my orchid. I think I didn't water it very well when my Grow Cube wasn't working. So that's the only plant that I lost. But other than that, it did pretty good. Hope you enjoyed checking out something a little different on this channel. It's a smart home product from Elecro with the Grow Cube. Thought this would be kind of interesting to try out, especially since sometimes I forget the water plants. And it would be nice maybe if I had this in my office or somewhere else in my house. My wife might want to claim this for some plants that she wants to keep alive. So I might not be able to keep this in my office. But as long as it's getting some good use, I would be happy. So until next time, I'm Dustin Casto, and I'll see you guys later.